U.S. President Joe Biden is highlighting a first in the Middle East relations. Right now, he is en route to Saudi Arabia, and Biden is doing it as the first U.S. president to fly directly from Israel to the Saudi kingdom. It's Biden boarding Air Force One last hour. Before he took off, he was hailing a new agreement that will end the Saudi ban on flights to and from Israel. The White House is framing that deal as a small step to normalizing relations between the two countries. Earlier today, Biden met with the president of the Palestinian Authority and repeated his support for a two-state solution in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. I know that the goal of the two states seems so far away, while indignities like restrictions on movement and travel or the daily worry of your children's safety are real and they are immediate. The, Pal the Palestinian people are hurting now. You feel it, you can just feel it. Biden came into today's talks facing criticism from Palestinian leaders who say that Washington is giving priority to Israel's move towards a regional security agreement with Arab countries. And as Iris Mackler tells us, his wider remarks about the peace process likely left Palestinian leaders disappointed. One of the things that he said was that uh, the, the peace process, which he's still committed to, is some, some way off. And they felt that that was a bit of a betrayal of them. Other people think it's merely a reass realistic assessment of the situation on the ground. They're calling for a reversal of the Trump era restrictions, reopening of a consulate here of PLO offices in Washington, things that have been promised but haven't materialized. Abbas, standing next to Joe Biden in Bethlehem, said that the time had come to end these apartheid restrictions, as he called them. How long will our people live under this occupation? And he said that the solution to peace in the region was peace starting here. He called for a proper investigation of the case of the death of Palestinian journalist Shirin Abu Akleh. And he also said he was extending his hand in peace to Israeli authorities. Now, we haven't heard that from him for years. In fact, the last contact there was a phone call just now between the Israeli leader and Mahmoud Abbas, and that was the first call for five years. So perhaps Joe Biden can chalk up this success in that his visit has inspired or reawakened something here. In going to Saudi Arabia, his next stop, uh, and as a sitting U.S. president to fly from Israel to uh, Saudi, remarkable there in and of itself, but this as the killing of another journalist, Jamal Khashoggi, hangs over that stop and the meetings that he will have with senior Saudi leadership. What are we watching for in that visit? We're watching for Joe Biden walking back his, his description of Saudi Arabia as a pariah state. He said he wouldn't meet the crown prince. I think you remember both those things. So he has to walk back from that and he has to mend fences. So the other thing we're looking for in addition to him walking that fine line in this region is a recommitment, a recalibration of US interests in the region. And he said that quite openly during his time in Jerusalem. I want the, the locals here to know that we are back, we are interested, we don't want a vacuum that Russia or China will fill. So what we're watching for is to see how successful that is. We have to remember this is also partly an anti-Iran axis and he's feeding into that with the comments that he made here and the concerns that they also have in the Gulf states. So all those strategic things are, what are, and his success with them, I guess, how persuasive he can be, are things we have to watch for. Iris Mackler reporting there in Jerusalem.